Hi there, my name is Jonathan Clark. In this short talk, I want to enlist your help. I'd like you to join the revolution. I'm going to ask you to lose weight for Scotland. And you're going to discover how to lose weight fast, build some lean muscle so you don't look saggy, and get your sexy self back. If you're watching this video, then I'm assuming that you want to lose weight, or there's something about your body that you'd like to change, yeah? Before we talk about how to do that, do me a favour and leave a quick comment below this video. Just pause it for a moment and just tell me which part of your body you'd like to change. Is it your waistline, your bum, your muffin top, your love handles, your thighs? Do you have bingo wings? Or is it your entire body that you're unhappy with? Help me out for a minute and just type below what it is about yourself that you'd like to change. And I'll wait here till you do that. Excellent. Now let me ask you, have you ever wondered what it would feel like to get more admiring glances and compliments from people? So you'd be secretly chuffed that they notice and maybe even walk a bit taller? Or maybe you'd like to be more flexible and bendy without aches and pains and strange grinding noises every time you crouch down or you get up out of your seat? What would it be like to have more energy to keep up with the kids or maybe get back to your favourite sport rather than just watching other people play them? Would you like me to show you how to get yourself to exercise more and eat better without using discipline or weird diets? Most people find it really hard to stick to a regimen, don't they? What if you could boost your immune system so you stay healthy and well? Being overweight leads on to so many other conditions and illnesses. Did you know that a 7% reduction in your body weight cuts your chances of developing diabetes in half? Just imagine if you felt happy in your own skin and you were proud of your body. Just suppose you looked in the mirror and actually liked what you saw. Well, I'm going to give you a simple system that you can use right now to burn the fat off, tighten up that bit there and build some lean muscle so you look great, you've got more energy and you live longer. You're about to discover that weight loss is an inside out job. You see calorie counting, diets, numbers on the scales at your feet, they're all outside of you. And the truth is, it's what you believe and feel on the inside about food and exercise that determines how your body looks on the outside. Now here's a controversial idea, that attraction is biologically programmed by evolution. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a difference between men and women. Millions of years of evolution have shaped our beliefs and motivations around our body weight and our body shape. A few thousand years ago, we roved in nomadic bands and natural selection determined who was fertile, who could provide, and therefore who was a good mate. And while we've exchanged our spears and furs for our iPads and suits, our biological impulses haven't caught up. Women in the Amazon jungle flirt with the same expressions as middle-aged barmaids in Govan. And like it or not, men are attracted to beauty and youth, while women are attracted to wealth, status and security. Ooh, controversial. Do you agree? Tell me I'm wrong. Okay, aside from that, you're going to discover how to sculpt your body in 90 days. What if somebody gave you a day-by-day, -day, baby step, one-at-a-time plan to burn off the fat and build up the muscle? Would you use it? Do you ever feel sluggish and tired? Do you ever wake up in the morning feeling like gravity has just doubled overnight and you can barely move? What have I shared with you? Five ways to boost your metabolism that are all organic and safe for you. See, the Romans knew something. The Greeks knew it too. The mind runs the body. And losing weight is very often not just as simple as eat less, exercise more. Sometimes there are emotional and psychological factors at work too. In fact, I'd argue most of the time. You probably know what to do, but you're actually doing what you know. Or is there something else inside you sabotaging your efforts? In over 20 years as a hypnotherapist and life coach, I've worked with hundreds of people on weight issues. The fact is, you can give someone a workout routine, you can give them nutritional supplements, but does that always work? No! See, the mind runs the body. Getting motivated in the first place and staying motivated further down the line, those are key. Bad habits can creep in, you know the story. That's where I come in. Imagine if you could program the mind to keep you on the weight loss or the weight gain program. 
How cool would that be? Well, that's the secret sauce in my system because there are nine psychological terrorists that hold you hostage in your own body and no diet is going to handle them. So what is Lose Weight for Scotland? It's a proven 90 day weight loss and fitness challenge based on 22 years of combining exercise, nutrition and self-hypnosis to transform your body. So why bother? Why do this at all? Well, right now, the UK is the world's second fattest country after the USA. Did you know two thirds of Scots are overweight? If you're in a group of people right now, look two people to your left and two people to the right. And do me a favour, say them to them, if it's not you, it's me, because it's got to be one of us. In two generations, the fact is, the parents will bury their kids. And in fact, exercise alone won't take the fat off. Listen, obesity is officially an epidemic. It is out of control. Now, looking back, when I was growing up in the 70s, all there was on the news was famine and starving nations. Band-Aid, Blue Peter appeals, yeah? In the next 20 years, all you're going to be hearing about is obesity, fat and more obesity. Obese nations, in fact. So here's my objective, to fight obesity in Scotland, fighting the fastest growing epidemic in the world today. And the time to do that is now. Listen, diets don't work. There are more diets out there on the web and in print than at any other time in history. Yet, the world is fatter than any other time in history. It's plainly not working. And unfortunately, people would rather pay £2,000 to get it all sucked out of them, which is quite easy, than go to the gym every month and save a fortune, which isn't as easy. And it will get worse. Have you ever seen the movie Wally? When all the humans have left the Earth on a spaceship and they're all enormous fat blobs sitting in hovering chairs all day just eating and watching telly? Well, maybe the future isn't as far away as you might think. And did you know that after age 35, you will lose between half and 1% of your muscle mass every single year unless you engage in regular physical activity to prevent it from going? What you ate today will be walking around tomorrow. So if you had a Big Mac and fries with a gallon of Coke to wash it all down, all that fat, sugar and preservative will be absorbed into your flesh just in time for breakfast tomorrow. Just go to YouTube and watch a video called Bionic Burger. Yeah, here we are talking to each other right now. You have an opportunity to do something about it right now. So just keep watching. So why should you listen to me in the first place? Well, first and foremost, I'm a dad and I'm a husband. So there's at least two other human beings who need me and depend on me. So I need to stay healthy and active. Secondly, I'm a certified life coach and I've spent the last 22 years helping people achieve their ambitions and their goals. I'm also a master hypnotherapist, which basically means I have a lot of experience dealing with the mental and the emotional factors around food, exercise and self-image. My clientele have been mainly female and mainly the issues have been around confidence and body. I'm also a trainer of NLP. I spent my entire career learning how to teach and edutain people, educate them and entertain them at the same time. So they have fun learning about themselves and how their minds work. Then you can run your own head rather than let your head run you. I'm also proud to be Scottish. And I'm not happy with Mike Myers immortalising my country forever through the character in the Austin Powers movies called Fat Bastard. And a busy boy that I am, I run three businesses. I've got a hypnotherapy practice, I've got training courses, and my weight loss business, which is my speciality. Over the last few years, I've produced 17 audio home study CD programs. So people can listen to some of my best work on MP3, and they can learn about the mind on the bus or on the train or in the gym. So far, I've published three books on Amazon. And all in all, I've amounted to something like 5,000 hours of one-to-one -one consultations with people, plus hundreds of seminars, workshops, and training courses. And I have one other advantage. I'm naturally slim. So what does that do for you? Well, it means I can teach you how slim people think about food. And I can tell you what slim people do to stay slim. It's fit thinking, not fat thinking. See, my weight was always an issue. And I get continually slagged about it. I inherited the same genetics as my dad. PE at school was a weekly nightmare. I'd cover myself up. I tried to be the last into the showers and wear clothes that disguise my build. But in the gym and the football pitch, there was nowhere to hide. 
not even when I was wearing my trendy Scotland strip. Remember that one? The problem was, because I also had asthma, after five minutes of running around, I'd be leaning against the goalpost pecking, gasping for air. At school, I became terrified of reading aloud in class. I'd get really scared, I'd break out in a sweat, I'd stutter, and my chest would feel like it was going to burst, and I couldn't breathe. In fact, I used to dodge English classes in case I'd have to read out loud. Especially reading out plays, where different people across the classroom had different parts to read out, and you can see your line getting closer and closer as you get down the page, and the closer it got, the more nervous I became. In fact, I developed a duodenal ulcer by the time I was 16, because I was so nervous and timid with people. Imagine that. I managed to burn a hole in my stomach with my brain. What a crap superpower. So 20 years of age, I'm on a drug called Tagamet, which lines your intestines to prevent irritation, and I call that an old man's drug. I found it nearly impossible to say hello to people I knew. I'd keep my head down, I'd avoid eye contact, I'd stay locked up tight, and I was shut down emotionally. Can you relate to this at all? You've probably heard about that old cliche that fear stands for false evidence appearing real, or as I'd prefer to say, effort and run. I was in stereotypical, specky, asthmatic, skinny weed. That was me, the classic ectomorph, characterised by long and thin limbs and muscles, low fat, also referred to as the skinny malinky long legs, the classic hard gainer with a flat chest and a fast metabolism. All my life I got teased about my weight. And people don't realise that it hurts just as much to be called a skinny rake as it does to be called a fat bee. My family health record was atrocious. My mum had high blood pressure and would later develop all sorts of weird and wonderful ailments, many of them rooted in fear and psychosomatic illness. What the dictionary defines as a physical disease that is thought to be caused or made worse by mental factors. Even my brother had hospital treatment when he was at a young age. See, we grew up in a small cottage in the middle of nowhere with dogs in the house, mice in the garden, and my dad's racing pigeon lofts at the bottom of the garden. We didn't get out of bed until the coal fire was lit and the water was warm enough to wash with. There was asbestos in the roof tiles and there was house dust under the beds that looked like tumbleweeds. My mates at school would be running around in short sleeve shirts and I'd be dressed like a spaceman, had so many layers on. And guess who caught the cold? It's no surprise in that environment that I got ill at least twice a year, especially around about November. Now, funnily enough, my dad used to call it Black November. He told me that in his lifetime, November was always cold and dark and wet, and he'd get ill every November. And he installed that into me as well. So he developed testicular cancer, and as a kid, I remember him going for radiation therapy. He beat it, but later that would play on my mind, especially when my brother got ill. My dad also had a hard time breathing. Years of working with homing pigeons had given him a condition called pigeon lung. And I always thought it was cruel that his hobby actually harmed his health. My earliest memory, in fact, is waking up in Strathclyde Hospital with pneumonia, aged about three or four. I'm told that I'd been left outside in a pram and I got sick. I would catch pneumonia again in 1986 for the second time, only six weeks into a new job. And that was the second time I spent Christmas in hospital. And somewhere in between those dates, I was told I had an allergy to house dust. So they took me into hospital and cut open one of my nostrils to make it wider. How the hell does that help? Now, growing up in the 70s, we had a typical Scottish diet at the time. Sugary cereal for breakfast before school, chip shop fritters and burgers for lunch, and a plate stodge at night, which invariably involved the deep fryer. Add to the mix sweets and sugary drinks. No wonder my dentist loved me. And no wonder I could barely stay awake in class. I'd wake up knackered in the morning before I even started, and I'd collapse into bed at night. In between, I basically relied on coffee to keep me going, sometimes up to five mugs a day. Can you imagine that? I also never drank water either, so I was exhausted all the time. I was full of phlegm and catarrh, and had frequent headaches. But I just didn't like the taste of water. We probably had lead pipes for all I know anyway. And that, none of that helped my asthma. And bear in mind, this was way before the invasion of McDonald's, Burger King, KFC and all the other fast food chains. All the red restaurants. Cheap, tasty, convenient food for the fat, salt and sugar, which has made the problem in this country ten times worse. But in 1986, I remember having pneumonia for the second time. I'm lying in hospital on a drip, watching a small air bubble working its way down the tube, thinking to myself, that probably isn't a good thing. And I decided I have had enough. 
It was also at this time that the doctor told me that I had a suspected heart murmur into the bargain, and that tipped me over the edge. Basically, I get sick and tired of being sick and tired. The first thing I did, as soon as I got out of hospital, was I bought a bike. Now, there was this hill outside the village where I lived, and my goal was to be able to cycle up that hill, even if it killed me. Now, because of the pneumonia, my lungs hurt like hell, but I got my head down and I pedalled. The hill was just too steep, so rather than look up at it, I looked down at the white lines on the road and I just kept pumping away. And the first time I managed so far, it was maybe like 10 white lines, then it was 12 white lines, then 15, and every day I got a wee bit further. After a few attempts, I managed to reach the top, reach the top so I kept going. Now that road snaked around the fields with sharp 90 degree turns and high hedges on either side out into the country, and week by week I just pushed slightly further which then became a one mile cycle, a two mile round trip, then a three mile cycle. Small baby steps gradually increasing the load. That also helped with the asthma because my lungs were getting stronger. Now sometime around the, that point, I stumbled across a great wee book on exercise and heart rate. I can't actually recall what the book was called, which is a pity, but it got me training regularly within the right training zone at heart rate. So then I bought some weights, I bought a bench, and I kitted out my bedroom with equipment. Plus, I had a life-size poster of the gorgeous Corey Everson, who was Miss Olympia at the time, to keep me motivated. I was also trying every weight gain supplement and protein powder that you can buy. And you probably know what a lot of meal replacements can taste like. Then just try to stay motivated and get yourself to exercise consistently. So I'd have long periods of intense workouts and then I'd have months of, I can't be bothered. You know what I mean? Now, one day a friend of mine invited me along to a new martial arts class. Whoa! I'd grown up with Enter the Dragon and Marvel Comics, so I loved the idea. But I was a skin, skinny, specky, asthmatic with zero coordination. So what hope was there? But despite my fears, I was nervously dragged along, and I met the instructor, who was a tall, skinny guy, who was also world kickboxing champion. Uh -huh. The 64 of us enrolled that night, and seven years and six belts later, I was the only one still training in Lao Gar Kung Fu. And man, I was fit! I mean, we'd do 100 sit-ups, 100 press-ups, we'd go running for two miles, we'd then come back, we'd do an hour syllabus, and then we'd spar three nights a week. Now, looking back, I didn't really appreciate that at the time. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. Now, my brother had studied psychology, so I started to read all these thick, heavy books about Freud and Adler and traditional behavioural change. But Freud said it would take 300 hours of therapy for the average person to change. Mind you, Freud was a coke addict. Makes you wonder how much a gram cost in those days. And if you prefer Carl Jung, well, he based his psychological archetypes on the major arcana of the tarot cards. So when people say to me, oh, you don't use traditional approaches. No, I don't. And look into your traditional approaches, because they ain't that traditional. Now, because of the radiation therapy and stuff, my dad had to go for frequent checkups. And the last time I saw him was when I drove him back from Stonehouse Hospital for his routine medical. I made him a cup of tea, I left him at the far side, and I went back to work. My mum found him dead on the carpet that night. And you can guess when he died. Black November 1991, the same week that Freddie Mercury died. How's that for the power of suggestion, encanting that to yourself over and over again? So I started reading about personal development and psychology for my own benefit. They say that people get into self-help books for one of two reasons, either inspiration or desperation. Well, I was pretty desperate. And all the past health issues I turned around and used as fuel to move me towards health and fitness. But even though I was trying all these different things to change how I looked and stay healthy, I chop and change so often. Nothing really kept my interest for very long. You get all excited about a new regimen. It's new and it's fresh for a couple of weeks. You know what it's like. And then you get bored and you gradually stop doing it. So I got very mixed results. See, whining and complaining won't make it any better and nobody's going to come and rescue you. The sooner you realise it's up to you, the better. It's what you do that counts. So initially I did private therapy to help people and earn some money, and then I started doing workshops to try and share this mindset with as many people as possible. I was just so enthusiastic about it. In the late 90s, I came across a magazine article on the blossoming field of life coaching, which had just arrived in the UK from the USA. And I saw a natural extension to what I was already doing. Plus, Scottish people love American stuff, don't they? So many Scots sing with American accents. You ever noticed that? So NLP helped me change 
my client's mindset and clear up the mental clutter and limitations that hold us all back. Life coaching looks at the external factors that make you who you are, your health, your eating habits, your relationships, your money, your career. And the great thing about life coaching was it could be done over the phone. So you have a weekly in-depth chat with your own confidant who would never judge you. They'd only gently help you explore, guide, and help you move in baby steps towards your goals. So no embarrassment, no shaming, no judgment. So I'd now had ways of dramatically improving my own life and the lives of others on both the inside and the outside. And all the while, I'm learning about exercise, managing my diet, what internal dialogue to run in my head, and how to avoid the numerous ailments that normal people get. And the people who knew me at school hardly recognise me now because I'm quite different. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, but I have spent two decades in personal development helping people one-on-one to change their lives. I've learned and taught advanced techniques like NLP, hypnotherapy, timeline therapy, EFT, HUNA. Because for me, it's always about making changes. If you're not happy with the results you're creating, then change what you're doing. Okay? Whining and complaining doesn't make it any better. It's what you do that counts. Now, is this for the power of the mind? In 2005, my wife Cheryl and I were planning to get married in Hawaii. And we quickly discovered that we were having issues with getting pregnant. So when I learned that the hotel that we were staying in had been built on the site of an old healing temple, I asked a Hawaiian elder for some help, some advice. And he told me about a fertility pond where the royalty would bathe on their wedding night. So we get permission to dip our toes in the waters. And our son Luke was the result. Coincidence? Could be. My life was good. I had a successful business, we had a wee bundle of joy, I'm working from home, I'm exercising regularly, we've got a healthy diet, and then something weird happened. See, all my life people said to me, ah, you're skinny now, but wait till you hit your 40s, then you'll start putting the beef on. And do you know what? They were right. My wee boy started patting my stomach and calling me five bellies. Where had this disgusting band of jelly around my middle come from? I mean, at night in bed, I could actually feel it hanging to one side. So I tried to cover it up and suck it in. I tried Zumba DVDs. I took Herbalife shakes, which tasted bland, even though they're full of sugar. I cut off all the fat from meat, but nothing seemed to stop fat growing on me. Now, before I did this challenge program, I could easily munch through a packet of chocolate digestives. I'd say to my wife, if you don't buy them, then I can't eat them. In 2013, a friend invited me to look at a new business that was coming from the States to the UK for the first time. It was a 90-day weight loss and fitness challenge with an eight-year proven track record. Now, at first, I was really sceptical and very cautious. But after meeting two members of the company and keen to drive the free BMW that the company would pay for, I decided to get involved. Body by Vi launched on February 7th, 2014. It was brand new. And for the people who said they tried everything, they hadn't tried this. It was originally designed to help athletes build lean muscle and take off fat. And the company then aimed it at the weight loss market and it became the number one consumed meal replacement shake in North America. Now, vi has got a great model. If you lose 10 pounds of fat or gain 10 pounds of muscle using their meal replacement products, they'll give you a free t-shirt that money can't buy. You go into a prize draw to win 600 pounds and they donate 30 meals to children in need in your name. And it comes with a, a money back guarantee. And unlike all the other supplements I've tried, this stuff tastes like a McFlurry. So I recommend a shake that tastes like cake to people who like cake. And the more you drink, the more you shrink. 37 days later, I qualified for the free BMW. Nice. 90 days later, I gained 10 pounds of muscle and lost 7 pounds of fat. My energy was way up and the belly had gone. An underprivileged child in Scotland received 30 meals as a result. My first experience of weight loss for me personally, and as you can see now, I've actually got abs. And because it's a meal replacement, I was saving about £15 a week on the grocery bill. I'm still eating chocolate biscuits, I'm 47, and I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. And I actually like what I see in the mirror. Can you say the same? Do you look good naked? Then there's the various success stories with hypnosis, like when I was asked to go on the Fred Macaulay show to help a guy get over a spider phobia. Then they brought out a red kneed tarantula. <laughs> That's him holding it. Or well, the time they had me back on and gave me four weeks to make Shireen Nanjiani's moth phobia disappear. So here's the situation. Scottish people are getting fatter and sicker. 
Now I'm the introverted scholar type. I've spent years studying this stuff so you don't have to. And I've trudged through my own journey. I've collected a big toolbox of fast and painless ways to help people burn fat and build lean muscle. Packaged into a 90 day proven challenge that can bring your sexy back. That way, people will live longer and be able to do more. Optimise the years you have left and add a few more for good measure. One thing's for sure, we will save some lives and all of it will be delivered in layman's terms with a Lanarkshire accent. So I'm on a mission to crush obesity, prevent diabetes and improve my country's health record. I'm challenging Scots to lose 10 pounds of fat or gain 10 pounds of muscle even if nothing has worked for them in the past. Are you up for that challenge? Or are you buying into some of the most common myths? I've bought loads of books, CDs and DVDs and they haven't made any difference. Listen, if you buy it but you never read it, or you never do the workout with a DVD, then no it won't. It's what you do that counts. So if you're lazy or you're happy blowing £2,000 on liposuction but still have the same habits, behaviours and attitude to food afterwards, it's only a matter of time before you have to do it all over again, then this is not for you. I can't be arsed, I've got no motivation. Well over the last 22 years I've learned that all motivation is self-motivation. And sometimes I can want something for the other person more than they want it for themselves, you know. And that's a waste of my energy. I, I don't motivate anyone. All I can do is talk to someone the way they talk to themselves and hope that it stimulates their core values and their desires. And we all have desires. Even the laziest person is getting exactly what they want. Or you can try what I call bookending. If you do perform, you give yourself a reward. If you don't perform, you pay yourself a penalty. So either way, you've stitched yourself right up. You're using pain and pleasure, so you're painting yourself into a corner. And it's too expensive to get healthy. Like you maybe think you need gym memberships, you need special equipment, you need new gear. No, you don't. All I've got is some free weights and an exercise ball. Skipping ropes are cheap and awesome. The council offer you a free treadmill. It's called a pavement. And they even put milestones every few metres to make it easy for you. They're called lamp posts. Start by walking to the first lamp post from your front door. Then tomorrow, do two lamp posts. Then three lamp posts. Or walk to the first lamp post, run to the second one. Walk to the third one, run to the fourth one. It's free. I don't have time to exercise. Listen, any physical movement is exercise. Next time you drive into the supermarket car park, instead of jostling with the locals to get parked close to the door, here's what to do. Just drive into the car park and immediately turn and park. Okay? Now you've got to walk all the way to the front door. And on the way back, you've got the added load of your bags of shopping as weights. Job done. Get up 20 minutes earlier. Exercise before breakfast. You get a better cardio workout anyway by training on an empty stomach. The body then has to use the fat as fuel. That's no trick used by competitive bodybuilders. Or get on the bus one stop later, or get off the bus one stop earlier. I've got no one to support me. There's a community on the web who will happily cheer you on, and it's a free service. Let me give you the website. It's spelled F-A-C-E-B-O-O-K. Okay? Or buddy up with a mate and do the challenge together. Hold each other accountable, because you'll feel bad if you let the other person down. I don't know how to work, get exercise. There's no secret website, it's called YouTube. Just type in beginner workout. See, I don't think that's a problem. When people say they don't know, I think actually that's an excuse. It's not knowing what to do, it's doing it. Having the motivation and the, and the time. You don't have a know-how problem, you've got a priority problem. So find something you enjoy. Running, rebounding, pole dancing, Zumba, doesn't matter. Or pole dancing, Zumba on our trampoline, I don't know. Just do more than you currently are. See, most people I meet are facing the same kind of challenges. They're tired and they're sluggish because they've got low energy. They feel stiff and old. Their joints are stiff. Bending over is difficult. Sometimes rolling out of bed takes a lot of effort. They've got aches and pains in their hips, their knees, and their elbows. A lot of the women I've worked with are covering up because they're ashamed. They're wearing slimming clothes that Gok Wan put them onto, or baggy jumpers to hide the jiggly bits. Or they go to the beach wrapped in a towel and they're sweating buckets, but they're far too embarrassed to reveal their body. And then there's the one I like, I hear a lot. I just like food. Good, that's normal. If you didn't like food, I can still help you. You're not going to stop eating, but you may have to change what you eat, and you may have to change how much you eat. 
So here's how we're going to change the shape of the nation together. You and me, one person at a time. I've put together the best of what I know into my new book. It's called Lose Weight for Scotland. Crush obesity, add years to your life and look good naked. It's available on Amazon Kindle or as a soft back book. So what's the difference about this book? Well, it's all of my best thinking in one place. This isn't one of those crappy ebooks that you download onto your hard drive and it sits there. This is the real deal. It's packed full of useful tips and tricks of the trade. It's also full of psychological methods for changing how you think and how you act around food and exercise. Now, if I was you, I'd be thinking right about now, there's plenty of DVDs, personal trainers, and endless books on the subject of dieting and weight loss. So how is this any different? Because I deal with the mental and the emotional blocks as well. You're going to learn about the nine silent saboteurs that glue fat to your body. You ever heard of the expression emotional eater? Well, in this book, you're going to go and learn how to avoid obesity, avoid diabetes, and avoid heart disease by getting control of your emotions. Listen, the news is full of athletes and celebrities who die, you know, they have heart attacks and they collapse. And it's, they're perfectly physically fit specimens, but it's their emotions that caught them out. So this book's a whole brand new approach. There's never been anything like this before. And this is a plan that you can start today and use right now because I want you to have more energy, get back into your genes or get into someone else's. I don't know. There's no sweaty boot camps. There's no embarrassing weigh-ins. There's just a slimmer, leaner, happier you. People will notice your new shape. You'll get compliments from your work colleagues, more admiring glances. Do you want some of that? There's 20-minute workouts. 20 minutes! Now, I'm guessing that you're probably like me and you like step-by-step -step guidance that's in plain English. So that's why I've included a 90-day challenge calendar which tells you exactly what happens on each day. See, overall, you just need to take five steps. There's five steps to your ideal shape, and you're going to want to write these down. Step one is to set a goal. Step two, take a selfie video. Step three, a why that makes you cry. Step four, put your earphones in. Step five, follow the 90-day plan. The first step is to set your goal, and this is really critical. The most important thing. What do you want in 90 days? What would you like? Do you want to lose three inches off your waistline? Do you want to add 10 pounds of lean muscle? Do you want to run a 5K? If you can't answer this question, then the challenge is impossible. How can you hit a target you can't see? Is it a weight loss goal, a muscle on goal, or a performance goal? Now, let me tell you about a mate of mine, an office worker called Gary from East Kilbride. He wanted to lose 30 pounds on the challenge. And as he described it, he wanted to go down from being obese to just being fat. <laughs> He used to be called Big Gaza at work, and now he's known as Skinny Gary. Here's what he said after doing three 90-day challenges back-to-back. -back. Last year, my wife went into hospital for an operation. Nothing major, but enough for me to question my own health. I was 17 stone and 9 pounds and not doing much exercise. I started to really worry about what would happen to my kids if my wife's health didn't improve and something happened to me. I joined the challenge and lost my first 10 pounds in six weeks. Since then, I've lost a total of 56 pounds in the last nine months. I'm feeling great without my excess podge, and I can now run about with my kids without getting sore shins after 30 seconds. And my asthma has gone. The challenge changed my life. Thank you, Jonathan, for helping me lose weight and giving me the confidence to stick to it. I never thought I could do it myself, but I'm living proof that if I can do it, anyone can. Step two, take a selfie video. Get out your smartphone or your video camera, tell us your name, tell us your goal, stand on the scales and record your starting weight and then say, challenge accepted. Do think you could do that? Here's some examples of other before and afters of people who've taken the challenge. Third, you need a why that makes you cry. Now this is really key about motivation and why people don't exercise more often. It's because their why isn't big enough. Tony Robbins once said, if you have a big enough why, you'll figure out how. See, your why is your fuel, okay? Ask yourself, why do I want this? Why do I want to lose weight? What will it get me to be in better shape? How will I feel? Now, I thought I knew my why. I thought that my goal was to put on muscle so I'd feel more confident about myself and be a living example of what's possible. Now, both of those were true and both of those were good goals. But as I went on, 
and actually realised it was deeper than that. The truth is, I know what I want to be around for my wee boy for as long as possible. No matter how old he is, he'll always be my wee baba. Step four, put your earphones in. If I gave you something special to listen to, to go along with the book, would you listen to it? Are you capable of pressing a play button? Here's what one of my challengers had to say to me. I feel extremely well, stunningly positive, determined, full of resolution to work very hard at the gym. I ate healthy, I've been as good as gold and I feel wonderful. Now imagine if you could say the same. Finally, step five, follow the 90 day plan. Here's my pal Neil. Neil was a rep for a brewery and he would sell beers into pubs. Problem is, he was also having a lot of pub lunches and as a side effect, he developed quite a beer gut. He went on a 90 day challenge back in May when I first met him, it was in Orlando. And when I met him again, a few months later, here's the photo. Quite a difference in only 90 days. And by the way, he only goes to the gym twice a week. So if you're a guy, would you like a physique like that in three months time? And if you're a girl, same question. So picture the looks on your friends' faces when they see how much weight you've lost. Just suppose you had to buy yourself a new wardrobe because your old clothes are too big for you now. See yourself getting lean and in shape. What would it feel like to look forward to going out socialising or dancing the night away? Would you like to be my next success story? Do you want to know how I can get the same result with you? Well, here's my system. It's a complete 90-day program. Think of it as a treasure map with simple day-by-day instructions that tell you exactly what to do. And what to do is really easy. Day-by-day calendar with easy baby steps. You can print it out, you can stick it on your wall, on your fridge, on the bedroom door. And it covers all the psychological keys, why people stop and how to keep going. The nine psychological blocks, and how to dissolve every single one of them. There's tricks about motivation in there to help you ignite the fire and catch yourself exercising more. Find yourself eating the right stuff, drinking more water, doing all the right things. The shortcuts and sneaky secrets from the bodybuilding industry, from fitness professionals I've spoken to, and the world's number one weight loss challenge company. And here's the contents page just to let you savour a taste of what's inside. Now a book this size would normally retail for 1997. Let me ask you, if all this system did was uncover the real reason you've stayed stuck for so long, would it be worth the investment? And if it got you to do more exercise than you currently are, would that have been a wise purchase? If there was a magic pill that melted fat, built lean muscle, had a phenomenal success rate and no side effects, would you take it? Of course you would. Well, there isn't. But you can have the next best thing. You'll be one of the first people to get access to this program in this format. This is not just another diet book and you don't need or try to use discipline to keep on the right track. Look, I know how confusing the whole weight loss field can be. That's why I took everything I know and I put it all in one place. There's no food combining, there's no weird diets, that doesn't work. I know that and if you're honest, you know that too. Now to make it even easier for you to decide, I'm also going to offer you my personal 100% expert guarantee. If you take action now and try the program out for 30 days, if you're not totally delighted with the end she's coming off, then you will get a refund. No questions asked. But I know once you try it, you'll see rapid, rapid results. But don't order yet. I want to give you something that will help you burn off the end and start looking lean even faster. So you like what you see in the mirror, even if you've tried to lose weight before. On top of the book, as soon as you say, challenge accepted, I'll even gift you my four special weight loss mind programming hypnosis tracks that do it for you. You just download them and every couple of days take a short break to put on the hypnotic suggestions right into your deepest mind. Whether you're on the bus, in bed, at the gym, effortless, easy and quick mind programming. Rewriting the program so you find yourself behaving differently. Don't need discipline, don't need mantras, don't need affirmations. You just catch yourself eating better, exercising more, and getting into great shape. Maybe you feel that you don't have time to squeeze any exercise into your day. That's why the first one is about balancing your time and your priorities. Shape your body 
lets you visualize your ideal shape and install that blueprint into the deepest part of your mind, the part of you that runs your body. If you're feeling low, low in energy and you're sluggish, boost your metabolism and motivation with this third self-hypnosis track. And the fourth one is called transformation, so your habits change. Now I could easily sell these, and probably will knowing me, individually for about 1997 each. So if you put those together with the book, the total value is about £99 if you bought them all separately. Now rather than sound like a tacky QVC commercial, I'm just going to be straight with you. You can have everything for only 99p. Now you might say that's a no-brainer, but no, this is for people with brains. It's really, really good stuff, okay? And because I want lots of reviews, I want to impact as many of the 3.6 million overweight Scots as I can in my lifetime, I'm going to offer it to you. Your risk-free investment today is only 99p, but you must take action now. I will raise that price just as soon as Amazon's rules let me. In fact, the time you watch this video, it may already have gone up. So click that link and grab your copy quick. I'm very proud of this system because I see the difference it makes in ordinary people's lives. So what do you do next? Here's what you're going to get. Four MP3 tracks, a secret Facebook group for challenges only, so you can buddy up and jilde each other on, faster results, group support, and a portable, convenient, and easy-to-use 90-day program. In 90 days, you could be a dress size smaller or a couple of belt notches down. How good would that feel? This is a really easy decision you're making. Just take a leap of faith. You're buying through the Amazon system, so you know it's safe and secure. And the Kindle book will be downloaded straight onto your hard drive immediately. You just email us the receipt, and we will send you the download page to get your bonuses. To order it, all you need to do is go to www.loseweightforscotlandbook.com and click the Buy Now button. The Lose Weight for Scotland 90 Day Challenge absolutely works. It works for my customers and that's why they keep coming back and it'll work for you too. So I'm challenging you.